We're Brad and Vanessa Johnson, and we want to tell you how God started Mission of Hope in 1998. In 1996, Vanessa and I went on a missions trip to Haiti just a few weeks after we were married. Towards the end of the week, a young man ran up to us, and he said, will you come to my village? My baby is sick. And so we, we went to their village, and it was just a few miles away, and a friend of ours was with, was with us, and he had an old military truck, and we drove down there. When we arrived, we walked in and to this hut, and the hut was about the size of the bed. And mom and dad were standing there, and their baby, Gurleen, she was 18 months, was laying in the middle of the bed. Uh, immediately, you could see that she was struggling to breathe, and um, we really didn't know what to do because we're not medical people. Um, but we went and we prayed and believed God for a miracle that day. Uh, but as we were there, she was getting worse and really struggling. She was sweating from a fever and you could see around the sheets the water that had come off of her that had stained the sheets. So we really didn't know what to do for Gurleen other than pray, but we knew we had to get her help. Brad and I and our friend who drove us um, hopped in the, his truck and, and drove um, about 30, 30 minutes up the road. And we got to this clinic, and as we were walking up to the doors, um, we heard someone from behind us say, oh, that clinic is closed today. The doors were locked, and we turned around and um, heard this little girl take her last breath. Gurleen had died in her dad's arms. Now we got back in the truck, the driver, Vanessa sitting in the middle seat, and a father holding his baby girl that he had hopes and dreams for, and she was dead. And we drove back to their home. And the mom had ran out with anticipation that things were better and realized that her little girl was dead. And um, she just fainted in the yard and people were screaming and it was just, it was just a very daunting moment. Um, not knowing what we had just experienced. And the next day we were traveling back to the States with all these young people and uh, we just didn't know what, why this had to happen, what this meant. Um, and trying to settle back into life uh, in Indiana <laughs> after that, that was really hard. God began to speak to both of us and he asked us a very simple question. Will you go to Haiti and change it for me? And we prayed over that, and after about two weeks, we realized we had to go. We had to go and at least try to help the next girling and to be able to save their lives for the kingdom. So in October of 1998, Brad and I packed up what we had, uh, headed to Haiti. And before we had arrived, uh, the U.S. military had offered to build us a school. With my background in education, um, we got there and one of the first things that we were able to do was open the school. We had 230 kids. It was amazing to see these kids come in. Almost every one of them were first generation students. They had never been to school before. Their parents had never been to school before. But the greatest problem we had was kids were fainting in the classrooms because they were malnourished. So coming to school hungry and not being able to focus was one of the biggest challenges. And this is where our nutrition program started. One of our friends said, hey, why don't you buy a peanut grinder? We hired uh, a lady that her whole job was to go to the market, buy crackers, buy raw peanuts, put the peanuts in the grinder, and grind it up. And every day she would make a form of peanut butter. We saw their lives radically transformed. Their orange hair from malnutrition became black, the natural color. Their bellies that were distended from worms became flattened out because they had health again in their stomachs and we saw their lives really start to transform. Mission of Hope's campus in Titania sits right on the national highway. Many times there'd be accidents and people would be brought into the mission where we were and ask us, can we help? And we didn't have any facilities there to help. So we would have to send them to Port-au-Prince, which would be an hour to an hour and a half away. We were getting ready to go to the States actually and, and speak at a church in Oklahoma. And um, there was a young mom that came to our door. We knew her and we knew she was ready to have a baby any day. And in the, in the night, she had given birth 
to a beautiful baby boy. And she had held him up to us and, and said, um, I don't think he's okay. And she handed him over and he had passed away in the night because the midwife had not tied off the umbil umbilical cord properly and he bled out and there was absolutely nothing we could do. And with crazy passion, we went to the States and with zero plan, <laughs> to be honest, we just shared the greatest need from a pulpit and said, we believe that God wants us to do something in medical so that we can meet the needs of people and minister to their souls in the process. And a family came up to us and said, we'd like to pray about that. We went back to Haiti the next week and we got a call from them and they said, we wanna fund your clinic. So God in his providence sent us to Oklahoma to meet the family that gave us the funds to start the Mission of Hope Clinic. In 2007, God gave us a vision for something that was much greater than Mission of Hope. It was an alliance of ministries coming together called Haiti One. And so we had a, a conference that we put together in Port-au-Prince, not knowing if anyone would attend, and over a hundred organizations came. Little did we know that in 2007 that would be formed, but 2008 we would have three hurricanes that would come through Haiti back to back to back within weeks of one another. And Haiti One came to life. Organizations from all different denominations from all over the country, started working hand in hand so that we could be the hands and feet of Jesus, taking the gospel to those that were in need. But little did we know what was coming in 2010. In 2010, the earthquake happened and over 300,000 people lost their lives. A million and a half people were displaced. God had already positioned Haiti One to be there so that we could bring the organizations together and we could lead an effort that would really bring hope to thousands across the country. After 21 years of watching God do incredible things in Haiti, we were able to think about expansion. We had a, a pastor that was Haitian that had been in the Dominican Republic and he had asked us, would we come over and do what God has done in Haiti in the Dominican Republic. So we just said, Lord, if you want us to go to the DR, would you open that door? So in 2019, we took that step. We saw God open door after door to work with churches throughout Santiago. We saw Haitian villages and Dominican villages start to come together through the church. And we saw real reconciliation. We saw groups from North America come down and partner with us. And we knew that God was doing something really special here in the Dominican Republic as well. So now we're excited about what God's doing here in the Dominican Republic and in Haiti. And our vision is that every man, woman, and child can know who he is and be transformed by him. What started with a peanut grinder nailed to a tree has now grown to over 120,000 meals served daily to children that are in need. What started with 230 children in our first school has now grown into over 16,000 kids that are receiving a Christ-centered education daily. What started in a rural village in Haiti called Titayen, which literally translates to less than nothing, has now expanded throughout the country of Haiti and into the Dominican Republic. Today, because of the need we saw early on, we are treating tens of thousands of people medically. What started with a church on our campus has now led to us walking with, equipping and encouraging thousands of pastors across the island of Hispaniola. After seeing the needs of moms and young women, today Women's Empowerment is working with thousands of women across the island of Hispaniola. From 1998, when the first soccer ball was thrown out, we saw kids playing soccer in the Mission of Hope Yard. This past year, over 13,000 kids were impacted through our sports ministries. One thing that we've seen God do in Mission of Hope is that He always brings the right people to the right place at the right time. And that's been true from the very beginning up until today. Thank you for partnering with Mission of Hope. We are committed to running after seeing every man, woman, and child on the island of Hispaniola, both Haiti and the Dominican Republic, know who Jesus is and be transformed by him.